Stan Jibalisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV. Whiskey One, good vibrations at your service to talk about ground plane antennas and how you can adjust the impedance at the feed point by drooping the radials. Now this shows a basic ground plane antenna. The, the red is the one quarter wavelength vertical radiating element and there are four, three or four or even more radials a quarter of a wavelength long each. <clears throat> I have only shown two of them here for simplicity and clarity but you can imagine two more one of them sticking right out of the page at you and the other one going right back through the page away from you. The coaxial cable goes to the radio this is a 50 ohm coaxial cable usually such as RG58U or RG8U or equivalent. RG8U, a little lower loss. RG213U, whatever. The shield of the coax goes to the radials and the center conductor goes to the radiating element and it's that simple. This is a 90 degree angle right here. These are horizontal radials, vertical radiating element. When you do that, you get a, an impedance at the feed point that is a pure resistance, no reactance, and theoretically 37 ohms. Well, that's not a perfect match to 50 ohm coaxial cable. It's good enough for all intents and purposes in terms of how much loss you're going to suffer because of the 1.5 to 1 or thereabouts standing uh, wave ratio that you'll have. Uh, that is rarely a problem. However, if you would like to get a perfect 50 ohm match, if you're one of those uh, types who enjoys that sort of thing, you can droop these radials at approximately 45 degrees down from the horizontal. So this angle right here would then become 135 degrees. Then you will get about a 50 ohm pure resistance and if you droop them just right you can make that exactly 50 ohms keeping the radials a quarter of a wavelength long. In general the more you droop the radials the higher the feed point resistance will become until if you draw them straight down around the outside of the coaxial cable and then convert that set of radials into a cylinder so that you in effect have a 180 degree angle here. If you do that you will get basically a vertical dipole fed through one of its elements and uh, they call that a coaxial antenna not because it's fed with coaxial cable, but because it actually is a coaxial arrangement in and of itself. This, this uh, shield actually folds right back down over itself. Uh, you can actually use a double shielded coaxial cable and, and then sever the shield at a quarter of a wavelength from the feed point and get that same effect then the, below the sever you connect the two shields together above it you leave them separate you can have a coaxial antenna and in that case you will get a feed point impedance of roughly 73 ohms just like you would have with an ordinary dipole a vertical dipole fed through one of its elements kind of an interesting arrangement I've used antennas like that and they really work very well on 20 meters and higher frequencies where the dimensions are manageable. On uh, 14 megahertz these uh, radials and the, the radiating element would measure about 16 feet long. On 10 meters about half that. If you want to go hog wild on 40 meters about 32 or 33 feet and then you can have your drooping radials double as guy wires with egg insulators and all of that sort of good stuff. But that's basically how you can adjust the impedance at the feed point 
of a vertical ground plane antenna. You droop the radials just right until it's about 50 ohms and as I said that's roughly 45 degrees of, of droop with respect to the horizontal. Stan Gibalisco, W1, GV, Whiskey 1, Good Vibrations, saying 73 for now, and so long.